Good afternoon, and thanks for having us in. Jury selection has started for the criminal case of 20-year-old Asher Parks. This comes almost two years after Parks was arrested and charged in the death of 19-year-old Dylan Montalou Trevino. His, this trial has been moved around a couple of times since then, but opening statements are set to begin on Thursday of next week. Later tonight on Kelloland News, Lauren Solok will take a look back at this case, which was the first homicide of 2021. A grand jury has indicted a nurse in Canton for allegedly stealing opioids from a medical facility. Court documents say Brittany Enstad would take oxycontin, hydrocodone, acetaminophen, and oxycodone out of their packaging and replace them with other drugs. Authorities say those replacement drugs could have been given to patients putting them at risk. Court documents say this happened between July and December of last year. Sioux Falls police are asking for the public's help in finding an endangered runaway. Officials say 12-year-old Ali Barjabo was at Kenny Anderson Park with his family when he got into a silver vehicle driven by a teenager. He stands five feet tall with black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a black hoodie. If you find him, you are asked to call Sioux Falls police. An event that annually raises tens of thousands of dollars for children with critical illnesses is happening this Sunday in Sioux Falls. Angels with a Dream is a car show, concert, carnival, and auction that has raised nearly $200,000 since 2012 from Make-A-Wish, South Dakota, and Montana. All kids and families, regardless of their means, can go out and have a day that's filled with joy and filled with hope and just the opportunity to be outside, have fun, look at some really cool cars, hear some great music, jump on inflatables and just have a great time. Angels with a Dream is set for Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Great Bear Ski Valley in Sioux Falls and it's free to attend. We'll tell you why this year's Angels event will be its last tonight on Kelloland News. Well, we had some rain this morning. Chances for rain are going to persist through today, continue tomorrow, but Sunday looks pretty dry, right, Megan? Sunday looks dry, but we'll have some cooler temperatures by Sunday due to a passing cold front. Right now, 68 degrees in Sioux Falls, a few clouds in the sky, a little bit of a break from the rain showers right now. South winds are at six miles an hour. Here's a look at some of the rainfall totals in the past 24 hours. These are not actual reports. This is based off of radar imaging. You can see almost six inches right on the North Dakota border, right by Mulbridge. It decreasing rainfall totals as we head to the south. Yankton coming in at about two inches, just over a half an inch in Sioux Falls. Right now, it's a wide range of temperatures. We have 64 in Yankton. 81 in Aberdeen, 79 in Pierre, and 77 right now in Rapid City. Our winds are light right now, 5 to 15 miles an hour. We'll keep the light winds around for tonight, but we'll get some stronger winds coming in tomorrow. On Kelly and Live Doppler radar, we do have a few of those passing rain showers right now between Plankington and Mitchell down towards Parkston. And just south of Yankton and Vermilion and Elk Point, those are all moving to the southeast out of our area. A few more rain showers between Mobridge and Gettysburg, Oneida, towards Highmore, Westington Springs, and Chamberlain this afternoon. We'll have an increasing chance of rain and thunderstorms as we go through this afternoon. For today, a high of 84 in Sioux Falls, 85 in Aberdeen, 90 in Pier, and 84 in Rapid City. Tonight will cool down to the upper 50s to low 60s with that chance of rain and thunderstorms. That will continue into tomorrow, a little bit cooler, 79 in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 81 in Pier, and 69 in Rapid City. Sunday, mostly sunny skies and a little bit cooler yet. We'll take a closer look in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. The biggest change in traffic conditions due to construction of a new John Waldron Memorial Bridge over the Missouri River is starting on Monday in Pier. All traffic over the current bridge will be compressed to the eastbound lanes starting next week. Start of head-to-head -head traffic has been delayed about a month. Rain in early May was also a factor in pushing back the starting of head-to-head -head traffic over the current Waldron Bridge.
The Missouri River Basin is seeing above normal runoff, but even that is still leaving reservoirs on the main stem system well short of full. May's runoff was 4.9 million acre feet, or 144% of average. As forecast now, Garrison Reservoir is the only one of the big three Missouri River reservoirs that will rise above the base of its flood control zone before the end of the year. U.S. officials say Ukrainian brigades trained by the U.S. and NATO are pressing forward. Their long-anticipated counteroffensive against Russia is underway. In an area already under Russian fire, drone footage shows the flooding after, after the destruction of a crucial dam. There have been several deaths reported, and rescue efforts continue under very dangerous conditions. Deborah Patter reports from Ukraine. <laughs> Evacuating residents from Kherson is a deadly business. Boats move swiftly through flood-stricken areas, not only ferrying people to dry land, but to escape the ongoing Russian bombardment. This elderly man was rescued by volunteers from his submerged home, only to be filmed moments later with a head wound caused by flying shrapnel. A rescue worker was asked what it was like operating under these conditions Adrenaline. before indicating he needed to get going because of incoming fire. Dear friends, we just, I just Ukraine's chief know, rabbi uh, Moshe Ruven Azman this, uh, was helping emergency crews bring residents to safety when to, uh, more shelling landed to, nearby. To bring people here from all the, the river and the Russian territory. Oh, yes, Give me up! In the eastern part of the country, Ukrainian troops have stepped up offensive operations around the beleaguered city of Bakhmut, which was only recently taken by Russian troops. Kiev says it's made steady gains along a wide front line. U.S. officials have told CBS News that there has also been an increase in fighting in a key region along the southern front. Deborah Pader, CBS News, Kharkiv.